Is nature's filing system broken? Is taxonomy outdated about the use of genetic research? And is that having a negative impact on animals in the wild? many different types of kite all around the world and here in the UK we have the red kite which is the largest species of kite and they're so easy to identify by that beautiful big V that they have in the back of their tail. Yellow-billed kites are an African species of bird of prey and the kites are an incredible group of birds. They're called kites because of their wings and the way that they fly. Kites have got a very low wing loading so what the wing loading is, is it is the surface area of the wing in relation to the size and weight of the bird's body. The kites have got a tiny little body, a little head and little feet, and then this really big tail and huge long broad wings. So their wings really don't have to do much work to put their body up in the air. The wing loading also works in relation with the stall speed of the bird, meaning the lower the wing loading, the slower the bird can fly before stalling. And so kites can sort of really effortlessly, slowly just glide around without falling out of the air and without putting much effort in. The kites also hold their wings on a dihedral wing angle. This is where they hold their wings up higher than their body. The opposite to this would be an anhedral wing angle, and that's where the wings are held below the body. Having a dihedral wing angle means that you've got incredibly stable flight, and so they can slowly and effortlessly glide around, but they're also really stable whilst up in the air. And this also makes them really agile. It means they can really throw themselves around turn tight corners, roll themselves in the air, and as soon as they get those wings back open again, they become really stable and can continue flying. But this comes at a price, and with the kites, they've got really tiny feet for the size of their body, so they can't take large prey. The largest prey that a kite will take is probably a small rodent or lizard. And the yellow-billed kites, a lot of their diet is made up of insects, particularly flying insects. So because they've got such an effortless way of flying and such a stable flight, they have learnt to catch their food whilst it's in the air. Now something that makes a bird of prey a bird of prey is the fact that it catches its food with its feet. So penguins and other coastal birds are predators and they do eat fish, but they catch their food with their beaks, so they're not a bird of prey. Whereas the kites, they still catch their food with their feet. So what the kites will do is they'll fly into something like a swarm of locusts, hundreds and thousands of flying insects all around, and they'll grab them with their feet because they are a bird of prey and they will move them to their beak while still flying around and it means that they don't have to land and they can just pick them off while still flying around and it's called feeding on the wing. I have a yellow-billed kite and his name is Wilbur and he is a beautiful display bird. I have a piece of paperwork for Wilbur and this is called an Article 10 and this is something that CITES, the control of the international trade of exotic species, will hand out depending on the species of bird. Some of my birds have A10s, some of them don't. But Wilbur does have one. But there's something that's always bothered me about it. On Wilbur's paperwork, even though I know he's a yellow-billed kite, he is listed down as a black kite. If I took this further and I just went straight into Google and searched the conservation status of yellow-billed kites, and what appeared but the conservation status of black kites? In taxonomy, there are different scientific classifications for every organism on the planet. Now you may have heard that animals have a Latin name or a scientific name, and that is their species name. Yellow-billed kites and black kites have a different scientific name, a different species. So black kites are Milvus migrans, and the yellow-billed kites are Milvus egyptius. This is then followed by a genus, family, order, class, phylum and kingdom. So yellow-billed kites and black kites are classified as the same from kingdom all the way up to genus, which is milvus. So maybe that's why yellow-billed kites are just classed as black kites. However, so is a red kite. A red kite is listed the same from kingdom all the way up to genus, but they have their own listing. So why doesn't a yellow-billed kite have its own listing? So maybe they are the same. If you look at black kites on Google Images, you'll see many results of birds that look very much like Wilbur here. But that's partly to do with Wilbur's age. So Wilbur is only a year old and he is a sub-adult. It's really common for birds to change plumage from their juvenile to their adult. So Wilbur's sort of in that transitioning period. Wilbur last year, in his first year, did look very much like a black kite. He had loads of lovely bright brown feathers all mottled into his plumage. And he had a really black beak. 
very much like a black kite. However, the adult yellow-billed kites are a lovely deep brown colour all over and almost black on their wings. And then they've got this really striking bright yellow beak. Over. Over. A study was published in 2005 called Prioritising Species Conservation and this looked at several different types of kite around the world. It's well known and accepted that black kites and red kites are two different species but this study actually found through genetic research that the yellow-billed kites are as distant to black kites as black kites are to red kites. If you search the IUCN and that's the International Union for the Conservation of Nature and they list the conservation status of many different species of animals you'll find that yellow-billed kites were only just added to the list this year. So why did it take them so long to add them to the list? And why, 15 years after this genetic research was done, do I still have a piece of paperwork that says Wilbur is a black kite? We might know now that they are their own species, but what we don't know yet is how they came to become their own species. There are several different kinds of speciation, and looking at the distribution of black kites and yellow-billed kites, it's difficult to tell what kind of speciation occurred. However, evidence shows it's likely to be a form of geographic speciation. The three main types of geographic speciation is allopatric, paropatric and sympatric speciation. Allopatric speciation, originally called the Dumbo model, is when a population is split and are geographically isolated from each other. Geographic speciation can be a result of various things such as the movements of continents, the formations of mountains or a body of water. The separated populations then evolve in different ways due to different selective pressures until there are two separate species. Parapatric speciation is where a new species forms from an isolated population adjacent to the main population. It is sometimes difficult to distinguish between allopatric and parapatric speciation. Sympatric speciation is where a new species evolves in the same geographical region as the existing species, forming two separate species occupying the same area or an overlapping area. So why does it matter? A paper published in 2018 called Raptor Population Trends of Northern Botswana showed the changes in numbers of 29 raptor species over the last 20 years. Yellow-billed kites were one of the birds in this study and they showed a decrease of 28% over the last 20 years. Only two of the species of bird in the study of 29 showed an increase and these were both snake eagles and as their name suggests have a diet primarily made up of snakes. There are several threats to the yellow-billed kite including human housing, logging, habitat destruction, trapping and hunting, and probably the most likely cause, poisoning. Despite all of this, the conservation actions for the yellow-billed kite are virtually non-existent. There is no action recovery plan, and there is no systematic monitoring scheme. Their only saving grace is the fact that they are included in international legislation. That means that without key pieces of research, such as the genetic study done in 2005, and the surveys done between 1995 and 2018, the species of yellow-billed kite could fall into extinction and nobody would even notice as long as black kites were doing okay. What would happen if yellow-billed kites went extinct? Yellow-billed kites fill two niches. Not only do they catch and eat flying insects, they are also scavenging birds. They are part of the dead body cleanup crew as well as the pest controllers against the insects. If they went extinct, the cleaning up of dead bodies would fall onto other animals, things like feral dogs. This means the bodies would be left to decay longer, as it's much easier for birds to find carcasses from the air than it is for dogs to find them from the ground. This in turn would mean more insects such as flies would inhabit the area. But again, with the kites extinct, who would control this extra amount of insects? You can see the problem. This vicious circle will push Africa into a plague of insects and disease. If you think that's dramatic, it's called a trophic cascade. And the reintroduction of wolves into Yellowstone National Park is a famous example of how the introduction of a predator can dramatically improve the diversity of wildlife and positively modify the landscape. At the moment, yellow-billed kite numbers are doing okay, however they are on the decline as a result of the threats that they face. Kites, along with many other scavenging birds, are suffering greatly due to poisonings. So what can you do to help? Well, the first step in conservation is education. So just by watching this video and making yourself aware, you're already on the right track. If you'd really like to help, there are several vulture charities and bird of prey centres that are doing good work against this issue. Otherwise, you can subscribe and keep an eye out for a future video about the conservation of vultures and the fight against diclofenic. So there we have it. 
As you might have been able to tell, this is quite a passionate subject for me, and the yellow-billed kites, like Wilbur here, are my favourite animals. If you have enjoyed watching this video and would like to see more conservation slash falcon related videos, then please subscribe to the channel. And that's all for now. Thank you for watching. Ha, 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 ha.